This video pivots off of my previous video on chi-square test of association. Um, in that particular video, I demonstrated how to generate a chi-square test of association with respect to two uh, dichotomous variables. Um, and in the uh, demonstration, we used uh, variables for gender identification and intention to vote. And we had essentially um, a group of individuals who uh, responded to survey items and uh, indicated being male or female and expressing an intention to vote or not vote uh, during the upcoming election. This is all, by the way, fabricated data, but um, this is just to demonstrate um, a few points. Um, now, the chi-square test, uh, one of the downsides of it is that it doesn't really give you a lot of information about um, the, uh, the direction of the relationship between uh, two variables. And so one option, if you are correlating uh, two uh, categorical variables, or basically two binary variables, then um, you can calculate a coefficient called the phi coefficient. And the phi coefficient is essentially the Pearson's correlation between two uh, uh, binary or dichotomous variables. And um, so, and you can do this pretty easily through SPSS. So, you know, it, what it, the nice thing about it is it allows you to uh, utilize the same correlation metric that we're familiar with, um, and um, while also uh, providing a test of that of the significance of that relationship. But really quickly, let me just kind of go over the variables. We have gender ID and intention to vote. Um, so the way gender ID is, is coded, we have one is re referring to individuals identifying as male, two identifying as female. Intention to vote, a value of zero indicates uh, an intention not to vote. A uh, value of one reflects an intention to vote. So essentially we can think about how these two variables are related use, you know, using uh, a grid. And so I'll kind of draw this up for you so you can see in this case, we have essentially um, gender. We can have gender ID on the um, uh, representing the column, so we can have male and female, and then we can have intention to vote uh, reflected on the rows. So we can say uh, no, and then yes. So you can see that uh, we we form a two by two matrix um, where each cell represents each combination of gender and intention to vote. So you can see that cell 1, 1 right here is reflecting males in indicating uh, intention not to vote. Cell uh, 1, 2 is reflecting females uh, in expressing intention not to vote. Cell 2, 1 reflects uh, uh, persons identifying as male indicating uh, intention to vote. And then cell 2, 2 is essentially uh, those persons identifying as female uh, expressing an intention to vote. So that we have essentially four combinations here. And so basically, you know, again, when you think about uh, the correlation using uh, correlation, the conventional um, um, scale, uh, it essentially ranges between negative one and positive one. Uh, at the center uh, is no correlation between the two variables. So if there's no relationship between the two variables, um, in our cells, and essentially we just have counts uh, within each of the cells. If there's no relationship, then we would expect roughly equivalent cell counts across uh, the four cells. Now, if there's a positive relationship, what that means, you have to kind of go back and think about how our variables are coded. So gender ID, we have a one for uh, male, two for female. Uh, and in terms of intention to vote, it's coded zero for no, and one for yes. So you can imagine that when we look at it from this perspective, um, a positive relationship would be reflected by um, uh, along this kind of diagonal right here, where essentially you would have males identifying as no's and females identifying as yeses. And so that would um, be reflecting a positive correlation between our two variables. Uh, a negative association would be such where you would have um, essentially females um, being associated with the no's and males being associated with the yeses. So essentially it'd be reflected more along this diagonal right here. And so that, if, if that were the case, then we would expect to observe a negative correlation between the two variables. 
So let's run our analysis uh, using the crosstabs option in SPSS. So we're going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, go down to Crosstabs. We're going to put Gender ID on the col uh, in the columns and Intention to Vote in the rows. Um, and then we'll go under Statistics and we can click on Fee and Kramer's V. And we're, we're mainly going to be centering in on the uh, fee coefficient. So we're going to click on Continue and then on OK. And so now you can see, in terms of our output, we have the fee coefficient being 0.221 and a significance given for that. So the correlation was positive, meaning that essentially um, females were more likely to express an intention to vote, whereas those identifying as male uh, expressed an intention not to vote. And so again, if we look at our counts right here, you can see this is uh, male no's and female yeses, and you can see that there's uh, much greater counts in these two uh, cells as opposed to the, um, to the, uh, the other cells right here. So uh, male yeses, there are some that indicate a yes, and females, they express uh, no's. But you can see that primarily the counts are kind of found right here. So that's going to suggest that we have that positive relationship uh, between the two variables. So that is um, essentially, you know, that is our, our uh, the calculation of the fee coefficient using crosstabs. Uh, just to kind of show you what I mean when I say that um, it's essentially uh, a correlation, uh, we can actually go through uh, the correlate option, go through bivariate and correlate these two uh, variables right here. We'll click on OK and you can see that um, we get a positive correlation between gender ID and intention to vote. There's our p-value right there. So you can see uh, pretty much the similarity uh, between uh, that and our fee coefficient above. So that is uh, just a very brief demonstration of the fee coefficient.